Good evening, everybody. I hope we're all doing well. Got uh, the BACD wheat ready to go here. So we're going to uh, chat about some anterior composite with Matt Parsons, uh, which is going to be Ace. Let's see if we can get Matt on the chain. A bit uh, <laughs> throwing me off a little bit. Perfect, but he's here already. Good man. How are we doing? Good evening, everybody. <laughs> I knew you were going to do that. Well, thanks for giving me that catchphrase, man. Uh, <laughs> how are you doing, bud? Good. How are you? Yeah, I'm really good, man. It nearly threw me off. They've updated Instagram, and I didn't know how uh, how it was working down there. Um, so I was saying, we're going to chat about some anterior composite, BACD week, dentures by Dave Hinckley's here. He might be disappointed that it's not uh, going to be composite uh, on dentures. It's going to be composite on teeth day. I hope that's all right. Um so yeah, we're going to get ready for BACD, and then next week we're doing some veneers with Sam Jetra as well, so that's cool. Um, but yeah, how was your day? Busy one? Clinical? Yeah, good day. Really nice little day today. Um, not Normally I've got a little bit squeezed here, there and everywhere, no lunch, but today I had a full lunch hour and enough time for my appointments, and it was all absolutely lovely. And got cakes off a patient, ate most of them myself, felt sick for two hours afterwards. Living the actual dream. Uh, we might have lost Matt for a second, but hey, um, hopefully not, because that was <laughs> starting pretty nicely. Um, but yeah, what we're going to do is we're going to go through, we had a load of questions in, we're going to chat first about, um, first about sort of planning, uh, and then we're going to go more into um, the actual sort of process of, of doing anterior composite bonding, composite veneers, or, or whatever we want to call them. Have we got you back? Did you just hang up on me? No, it says that you uh, you couldn't invite, but I can't see you. Oh, uh, sorry. Can you see me now? Uh, I, I've seen you, but you're frozen. Oh, sorry. It's going smoothly, isn't it? <laughs> I don't know. Try swinging your camera around or something. Might be Maybe. that we need to... Uh, do you want to drop out and uh, invite you back in? Yeah. Yeah, sounds dreamy. Bear with us, people. We'll get there. Um, I won't take it personally that Dr. Matt Parsons has left. Let's get him back in because um, it was all going so well. A few people saying they need some help with their veneers. Right, here we go. Take two. Good evening, everyone. <laughs> Are we going? Can you see me? I can see it. And you're moving and everything. Very exciting. So um, just give us a little bit of a, an intro now in terms of yourself. And uh, so we'll get, get started, really, because we've got loads of people on. So uh, let's give them what they want. Cool. Uh, I've just seen my wife's joining. Hi, Meg. Um, <laughs> yeah, my name's Matt. Um, I'm a dentist. I work in Liverpool good, and good Manchester. Uh, yeah, I'm definitely qualified. I'm on the register. Although I did come off the register not long ago. I forgot to pay my subscription and I, I was off for about two weeks. So, um, Yeah, I do mainly cosmetic -y kind of stuff, especially as minimally invasive as possible, things like Invisalign and Comps Bonding and all that kind of thing. Um, yeah, I'm lucky to work in a couple of great practices, great people, um, and I have an all-round nice nice little day when I'm in work. So practice-wise, you're up in, in Ruin, Manchester, right? And then yep. you, work, you work in Liverpool as well? Yeah, so my friend and his sister own a practice called, well, called Duthie Dental, but they just opened a second site called The Abbey which people should check out because it's really nice. Um, so I'm Shameless based plug, there. I like it. Three minutes in. <laughs> <laughs> Got 20 of them to get through. Um, yeah, so working up there now, and it's lovely, yeah? Brand new practice, all brand new units and hand pieces, and it's like getting a new car, I suppose. I suppose. Everything just works, and there's no rattles, and there's no imperfections anywhere yet. <laughs> yeah, you haven't broken anything yet. Um, in terms of composite stuff, obviously, like I've been following you for quite a long time. We've got a question already about how long is bonding asked. We'll get to that, I'm sure. Um, in terms of sort of, I've been following you for a little while, and I'm always amazed by the number of cases and like just the consistency and stuff. So, like, how long have you been sort of focused in on you know cosmetic stuff, and do you limit yourself to it, or is that just what you showcase? A bit like mine, I still do. Well, I don't do that much bonding or anything, but I do you know, routine dentistry, but I just show that side of it, or are you just doing cosmetic stuff? Um, pretty much just cosmetic stuff now. Happened by accident. So I qualified in 2013, um, 
worked, did my VT year, um, stayed as an associate for a little bit and then went to Australia, worked in Australia. My phone keeps like all power saving mode on or something. But, um, went to Australia, worked at the dentist for seven or eight months, um, travelled a little bit while I was there, then we travelled a bit more in other parts of the world, came home, back to my original VT practice, um, busy NHS dentist, little kind of a small den plan list, um, went on the mini spa makeover course, started mm-hmm. doing a little bit of composite bonding, got some word of mouth referrals, did some more composite bonding, started an Instagram page, got some more composite bonding, and it's just, it's it snowballed. It was never, I was always very adamant of the fact that I never wanted to specialise. I don't know, obviously it's not a specialty, but, you know, narrow my mm-hmm. practice. I always loved, I loved taking out a carious route as much as I did. Well, maybe not making dentures, but other parts of dentistry were oh, all great. How very dare you. Uh, <laughs> That's what your page is missing, not enough impressions. That's what, oh. that's what I'm saying. Do you know what? I actually did once put composite veneers on a denture. So that's another story for you. Um, I like it. I like it. But yeah, and it, it's kind of, it's all happened by mistake. But these days, yeah, kind of just cosmetic, I suppose. But those patients will often need other bits and bobs doing. You know, I mm-hmm, tracked mm-hmm. a couple of teeth yesterday, which was nice. Um, remembered how to do it. Um, do a, a bit of endo as and when people need it and stuff like that. So I'll kind of tackle whatever the patients need as much as I can. Um, but by, but, by the very nature, most of what comes through the door is more cosmetic stuff. Yeah, it's a little bit yeah. that kind of self-fulfilling prophecy where yeah. people coming in wanting this kind of stuff tend to have healthy mouths and know what they want and they've been informed and they've done the research and all that kind of stuff already. Yeah, we had a couple of your patients are in here. I'm sure, well, I'm sure quite a few of them are, but uh, CLJXX says, hi, Matt, can't stop smiling after yesterday. Thank you. So that's a good one. And Sadie Makeup says that she loves you, Matt. So there we go. Oh, we've, got Sadie. Some, uh, we, we've got some super fans in. Sadie was a good, yeah. good couple of years ago now. I'm glad they're still there, Sadie. Perfect. Loads and loads and loads of people coming in. This is a So let's jump in. and um, say the usual way that we do these things and all the other topics is we'll sort of talk about maybe consultation or you know planning assessment and things like that and then move on to what the most of our questions are about which was um, more sort of tips and tricks in terms of procedures so in terms of like a consultation view as we said there you know self-fulfilling prophecy chicken and egg you know you've got maybe a lot of cosmetic sort of consultations coming in you know do you do a specific one is there a certain pattern you follow for that what does an assessment look like in in your clinic um it's it's actually different in both clinics um the Rue Dental model is very TCO led. Mm-hmm. Um, so they'll have 15 minutes with the treatment coordinator who will take a set of full set of photos. They'll, um, I'm just going to, because I don't know. So my phone keeps dimming. I don't know if it's going to switch off the screen completely or if it's just going to stay dim. If it stays dim, that's fine. So I'm going to leave it dim and see if it stays. But if it suddenly cuts off, I'm really sorry. It was less than that. <laughs> that's TCO led. Um, so they'll take 15 minutes. They'll talk to the patient, ask what they want what they don't want what they'd like um they'll take a full set of photos so then then they'll bring the patient through to me and i'll have already seen the photos i'll have a bit of a handover um a 30 minute appointment with me where the i reckon he's been Sorry. dimmed <laughs> it dim you for it didn't work <laughs> i think it's like power saver mode or something wait i wonder wait there one sec here we go He's going to go find the plug. Bear with us, guys. Love a good technical error. It's a good way of doing it. I just have to keep touching the screen. Oh, I'm going to wait there. No. Um, <laughs> yeah. She's, so, she's, she's logged off to come ask you for a cup of tea, right? <laughs> uh, do, do you want a charger? Um <laughs> So yeah, so then I get 30 minutes in my chair. It's, you know, nine times out of 10, it's BP 0000020, base chart, maybe some missing premolars, missing eights, a couple of fill-ins, but it's never, it's very rarely a complicated one. So, you know, I used to book a little bit longer for my section. Um, and I just found that nine times out of 10, I wasn't using it. So for the one that comes in that's a little bit more complicated, I will just run over and, and catch up. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Um, 
and then they'll have 15 minutes with the TCO again afterwards to talk about prices and finance and book their appointments and consents and all that kind of stuff. Um, Liverpool is a slightly different model, but that's kind of a just 30 minutes with me. But I work with my nurse does almost TCOing in a, in a strange kind of way. So I don't take photos or anything like that, but she'll be putting together treatment plans while we're doing the consult. We've worked together for a few years now. She knows me really well. She's amazing at her job. Um, so she'll be kind of putting treatment plans together and stuff while we're talking and while we're kind of formulating the plan so that by the end of the appointment, they're there and ready to go. Um, and they get emailed out to the patient who then reads it in their own time and gets back to us to book in. Um, but yeah, so very slick yeah i mean yeah i think that was a lot of particularly as you said there sort of the maybe the the not necessarily a digital consultation but that was something that, that chris barrow a couple of weeks ago said a lot about was that you know they've maybe had a, a pre-consultation whether it's on zoom with a tco or whatever and then there's a scan done and photos done and it's all um sort of set up or ready to go for you and hands it over and makes it more efficient and as you say it's sort of maybe taking away those patients that aren't going to you know, be useful for what you'd need to be doing if they're, you know, say need loads of other stuff doing or whatever, or at least if it does, you're pre-prepared. And mm -hmm. obviously you said there, you're not taking any pictures. So actually the credit for your Instagram account is partly, partly the super nurse that takes all the photos for you, is it? Oh, it's, um, I, I, in Liverpool, I take my own, but in, ah, it, okay. <laughs> Donna and Jordan are the, the photography wizards there. They know what they're doing. Ah, fab. So in terms of then you've seen a, let's say it's like a sort of composite, you know, three to three bonding case or something like that. You've got a set of photos. How are you going about, are you communicating that with the patient that half an hour? You know, are you, you know, going through photos or is it something you just sort of plan? You don't necessarily involve the patient with, you just plan it further down the line. Yeah. Um, we kind of make it up as we go along together. Um, and I say mm -hmm. this to patients in terms of, because one thing that some people will sometimes ask is, oh, can we do a mock-up and things like that? And what I always say and what I believe is that the problem with a mock-up is that if I do a brilliant mock-up that looks great, <laughs> I might not be able to do that again. Yeah. You know, like when you're a kid and you drew a picture and it looked amazing and then you try and draw it again and it's a bit rubbish the second time around. So what I'd always rather do is do the best I can straight away, you know, not take five minutes to do something that's going to take me an hour and a half, you know, do yeah. it properly. Um, and then work on that together if needs be. So nine times out of 10, 19 times out of 20, patient sits up. Yeah, they're perfect. Great. Sometimes I'll sit up and go, oh, could they be a bit squarer or a bit less square or whatever it might be? And it's okay. Yeah. Lie back, you know, two minutes with the Softlex disc or whatever it might be. What do you think of them? And it's, and then you get them perfect together mm -hmm. the first time. If that makes sense. That, that's a nice thing about composites. Porcelain cases, ceramic cases are a totally different beast. That's all in the planning um, and using wow. the template like a diagnostic tool and stuff like that. But with composite, because you can add or take away to your heart's content, I'd rather just get myself 95% of the way there and then make any little tweaks that I or the patient thinks that might be good. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so there you're saying more so yeah porcelain stuff you may plan that a bit more obviously lab communications but mainly for yourself as well how you're going to go about it um in terms of then sort of taking it to the next sort of stages with it or maybe it is that porcelain stuff what's the process there are you have you got you know scans that you're saying to the lab or is it photos annotations yeah so let's make sure i don't show any patient details because a lot um, of them are wrong so they might they might, <laughs> they might well this is it so. well if if vic's watching here, here they come but no full face <laughs> if she's watching and, and you hear it's not full face don't worry it's just pictures of teeth um right where give me a minute inside of you and that's thinking face now this is good I big like technophobe <laughs> trying to figure out how this works um and I'm that disorganized. My like folder, my photo folders is just a disgrace. Um, here we go. Okay, so poetry in motion. This <laughs> right. <laughs> Let me turn the camera around. I've got to be. I want to be a hundred percent certain that I'm not going to show a face. How do I? Um... There it is. It's that one. Okay. So that's a covered mate. Yeah. This. Is... <laughs> yeah. This is the shade. <laughs> 
So we're going. So <laughs> it, it's something like nice this. One. So yeah. So this is a case where we're planning veneers, mm -hmm. um, and I'm looking at it thinking, okay, well, because we've got a peg lateral on the left, we've got a cano on the right. I want to make as much room here and as little room here. So this little midline estimate that we've got, I want to close it off the upper left one. Um, maybe prep the distal one a little bit, which allows us to bring that as wide as we can and um, create the symmetry by taking maybe this central backwards a bit, which gives us room for this. Um, gingivectomy, I want to make sure that the zeniths are looking right. So, you know, um, I'm trying to keep that on roughly where it is, but on this canine, try and maybe just bring it forward a touch and stuff like that. So by sending this to the lab, what comes back is normally really good um, and then the other really useful angle is an occlusal shot where i'll mm -hmm. you know the vast majority of the time it's additive so you can imagine how little prep there's going to be on these teeth um it's, it's just a margin you know because we're adding to each single one but again it's nice it's saying um please close the central space off the upper left one and prep distal a little bit so it's it's just this thought process so rather than just please wax up four to four spend five minutes like this mm -hmm. and the, the stuff that comes back if if your lab listens to you which the good ones do um yeah and it, and stuff comes back a lot more consistently um, so then go for it you got this you i go. believe in you there we go fantastic very elegant um, so I think the other, well, the first sort of question then that sort of flows in from this planning side of it is things like shade selection. Let's keep on, let's keep on composite at this point. Um, so first off from that, are you a mono shade guy? Are you a layering guy? Do you mix and match? How do you go about that? Yeah. And is that, and is that something you decide beforehand or just on the day you look at it and you go probably mono shade or, or what? Yeah. Horses for courses. I think if I'm trying to blend in then it's gonna be layered or tints or something that mimics natural tooth a little bit you know teeth aren't, aren't mono shade so if you're trying to blend in with that mono shade's not going to work um if we're going for kind of full coverage then if a patient wants really natural then i'll use kind of some dentine and some enamel layers and maybe plus or minus tints um if a patient wants a little bit natural but a little bit fake, which is what most people want, um, then I'll use mono shade, but I'll use something like um, microfill by Renamel, which has got, it, it, it's quite chromatic, but has got a little bit of translucency to it when you polish it and keep it nice and thin. So you get, you don't get the kind of the incredible effects and stuff on the inside of the ledge, like, like the glass veneers that you see on Instagram. But what you do get is just that, that gradient from kind of warm up of the neck of the tooth to cool at the tip of the tooth, just shining through and it just breaks it up a little bit. Or obviously, you know, I work in Liverpool, so if people want very white, very uniform teeth, then I'll still use the microfill, but just have it that little bit thicker so you don't quite get that gradient shining through it. Mm -hmm. um, and do you, do you get that more often than not, you think, up in, up in Liverpool, the, uh, the, less you know, the kitchen I, cupboard? Yeah, less than I used to. Um, going out of trend you think maybe 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 going out of trend maybe because i've got a little bit of a like a waiting list to see me now so i don't know if maybe the kind of patients that are willing to wait for me maybe by their personality type want a slightly more natural look but then i, I get patients to wait for me who want that very white look as well and do you know on the right patient it can look really good as well mm -hmm. so it's all I don't know. I, I think I think it's really important to respect what patients like. You know, we don't all have the same tattoos. We don't have the same hairstyles. We don't wear the same clothes. Why do we all like the same teeth? And I love it when you see on like um, Facebook and stuff where they criticise the people who have done the football players' teeth really white. And it's like if if you honestly think that you've got the same taste in teeth as a Brazilian Premier League football star, then you're deluded. You know, it's mm -hmm. everyone likes different things, and as soon as you stop respecting that and think that you know better. I think you're making a big mistake. Oh, there we go. Some wise words already. Um, if we move yeah. into the sort of more... <laughs> full of those, are we? We move more into the actual treatment side of it then. If we 
So you touched already on the renamel. So is that your go-to composite or is it again, is that only for specific cases? And uh, you can chuck brand names at us and everything, don't worry. Uh, no, uh, no sponsor stuff going on. Not the BBC. Um, <laughs> yeah. Other brands are available. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> Renamel is, yeah, is my go-to majority of the time. Um, is that pol polishability, handling? It's just what I learned. Like I say, so my kind of intro into this world was to go on the Mini Smile Makeover course with mm -hmm. Dipesh. Um, and Which used they, to be called Renamel, I think. Exactly. Well, it teaches yeah. the Renamel system. And I quite like that because when you come away from the course, you've got almost like a blueprint to then just go and start doing rather than being, you can do this or you can do this. or What you want to do is go away with a set of instructions to follow and then gradually figure out your own I can, I can kind of mm -hmm. things for me personally. That's how my brain works anyway. Um, so I learned the Renamel system and just got used to it and loved it. And I haven't had a problem, haven't really had a, pro a, a reason to change. Um, when I started working at Rue, they use a lot of um, Empress Direct. So I started using that a little bit. And then you kind of start almost seeing the optical properties of the two. And when you look at a case, you go, oh, no, this is going to really suit this one or that one will suit that one, if that makes sense. Um, the Emperor, for example, the Empress enamel shades have a bit more of a colour to them. The renamel ones are a little bit more translucent. So... Mm -hmm depending on the, the incisor ledge that you're looking at trying to create, you can almost just get a bit of an eye and go, oh, that would suit that, or that would suit that. And it's just the more you do, the the more you get to spot what would work. Then maybe there's certain, certain thicknesses of material, you're maybe not going to want loads of thickness of translucency and, and that kind of yeah. stuff. Head, nail on the head. Oh, it's almost, occasionally I do do a composite. You just don't get <laughs> to see it. Uh, <laughs> The next bit as well, someone wants to ask about your choices of instruments, any particular, you know, ones that you can't live without, Desert Island Discs. Um, you know, do you have a certain system of instruments and stuff? Yeah, so my little kit is um, a mirror, a Williams Probe, a IPCL, Interproximal Carver Long, um, and mm -hmm. I get mine from Enlighten, so they're the Cosmodent ones via Enlighten. Um a paintbrush and um, i use the cosmodent ones it's just what we have you know the style italiano make the ones with the disposable heads they're really good mm -hmm. um and then an opera sculpt pad yeah um, just the pad just the pad they're the six mil pad yeah six mil pads my favorite um yeah and that, that's my kit it's quite simple it's a mm. it's a pad a paintbrush and a thin carver essentially uh, and things like not not quite instruments but other bits and bobs there i mean like matrices and things like that uh, yeah. i'm guessing since you said you're not really overly doing wax ups and things there's not much stents and things like that more freehand yeah more, yeah more freehand um matrices i'll normally just use my last strip it's mm -hmm. rare that i'm I, I don't know why. I don't know why. I only really use my last strips, and I've tried. I've used little sectional matrices for the odd little curved contact mm -hmm. or um, closing black triangles and stuff like that. But genuinely, almost all cases you can handle with a mylar strip. What I find is that the, the, there's Dipesh taught teaches this. There's two parts to a to a kind of a contact point on an anterior. There's the curved portion down at the ginge of it, and then it a flat portion of the majority of the tooth before it then curves away a little bit. And when you've got a fine enough carver, you can actually, that curved part down at the gingival margin, if you're careful to not stab the gum, then you can actually just, you can carve that. And by the time the teeth actually meet, it's then quite a straight contact point, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and if, if you don't get it quite right, then little kind of metal interproximal finishing strips to kind of angled and, and polished around to, to just refine any little curves and stuff work really well. But yeah, that, that's how I do it. Simple, I simple kit. Yeah. Principles dream, aren't you? I know, I know. They, <laughs> they don't know the ball. <laughs> um, people then want to talk a bit about layering, things like that. So I've said you're not always doing it, but layering and, and secondary characteristics and building stuff like that into the into the teeth um, when they're not wanting BL minus <laughs> one dead bullet straight. What's our sort of layering techniques and things like that and 
do you go for a lot of secondary anatomy and things? Um, yeah, I love secondary anatomy. I think it's the, I think it even if we're doing, you know, SB one five to five, I'll still try and put secondary anatomy in because because it breaks up the light and it stops them from. It allows very white teeth to look nice, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. um, so let me show you a case. Here we go. Rick Brown says, hallelujah, totally agree with as few matrices as possible. There we go. Also, he's tired. Go. How's it going, Rick? Nice to hear from you. Um, the Whitechapel right. dentist was just asked there, what type of shade guide do you use? Have you got a specific one for your systems? Have you made your own? No. Um, little blobs on the teeth. Mm -hmm. um, always do it at the start of treatments. Don't do it halfway through. Um, pop a little blob on. Try and have it in different thicknesses. So kind of I'll put, I'll, I'll put a little blob on maybe a, a grain of rice and at one end of the grain of rice I'll smear it across the tooth cure it because it always looks a little bit different once you've cured it um, and then I can kind of see how it's going to look in slightly thicker and thinner section as well um, yeah I, don't, I, I use shade guides for lab communication but from a composite point of view mm -hmm. you, you can make your own shade you know you can it, it, yeah I don't think shade guides. You can make your own custom ones with composite, and I get that. But teeth, if you're trying to create a tooth, they've got about 10 different colours within them. So you're better off just using all your little bits and bobs. And you, you can't really get that from a shade guide. But trying a few little bits on the teeth is the best way for me, personally. There we go. Um, so, yeah, how do I spin this round? I just did this. I've just spun it. <laughs> there you go. So um, We'll get there by the end, mate. Don't worry about it. Edge, <laughs> edge bonding. So this guy do you know what i found the invis the before or the photos before but it'll take me about 10 minutes but basically you can just believe me that the laterals were tucked behind a little bit bit of a deep bite and we got quite a lot of wear on the laterals and the threes but the centrals actually look really nice so rather than the the whole broad stroke let's bond three to three we said let's leave the centrals and bond the twos and the threes which is always a bit more of a challenge, but a little bit more fun as well, um, because you've you've got to conform. So this is where we start. So I'll always sandblast first. Um, I don't use rubber dam for this kind of stuff. It's not laziness. I love rubber dam. We use rubber dam everything posteriorly, you know, even cementing veneers and all that kind of stuff. I'll always try and get a rubber dam on for this kind of stuff because I do go freehand. Um, it's really important for me that. I can sit the patient up, I can come around the front of the patient, I don't want to lose my landmarks and the, the mm -hmm. nose, the lips, the smile, everything else. Um, especially when it comes to full coverage, composite veneer, stuff like that. If you're going to start putting floss ties on, then you've got to numb the patient up. If you numb the patient up, they don't smile the same and you can't really see if you if things are going right. So it's not, it, you know, it's not laziness. It, I'll, I'll use an Octrogate. Um, mm -hmm. no, so um, that's, so what, what have we got? Just put the that Octrogate. Yeah, Octrogate. Um, that's my finger. That's nothing exciting. Um, <laughs> Optrigate, um, a bite prop, and a good nurse, basically, is the, the golden trio. Um, so, yeah, so this is how we'll do it, freehand. So we'll... we'll Later like show. Yeah, we'll pop a finger around the back. No, I don't know. Depends how dirty your, your mind is, if that sounds okay <laughs> or not. Um, I'll roll up a tiny little ball of enamel, and I'll tuck it. So I'll tuck it from the palatal and smear it from the palatal so I get a decent junction on the palatal aspect of the tooth. Mm -hmm. where's, my, where's my pencil? I can point to things. Um, and then I'll leave my thing, my left index finger there and with my right hand, I'll then carve something like this. So pressing it against my finger, a little bit of excess and all this kind of stuff and it's absolutely fine. And you want to get to the point where you, the blue of your glove is, is shining through or the black of your glove if you're an Instagram dentist. But mm -hmm. the blue of your glove is shining through the enamel. Um, then I'll use my IPCL almost like a blade. So I'll kind of, I'll cut across there. Nurse cures. And then as I pull my finger away, this will normally come away with my finger. If it doesn't, then you can just jam your carver through there and it just flicks away because it, it's mm -hmm. held on by such a wafer thin bit. Um, is that clear on the screen there, by the way? Because it's a video. Yeah, yeah it's great. That, okay. Um, so you get something like that. Then dentine. So a little bit of a dentine buildup. Um, trying to look at the tooth next door. So, you know, we don't have three perfectly four mammalons here. We've got a bit of a, 
I'm going off focus. We've got a bit of a just a a blurry edge, if you like. So try and copy something similar. Try and keep it nice and random, not too uniform. <coughs> and then magic ingredient is a flowable opaque. So I don't know if this is a bit too subtle, but you can really see there where the tooth ends and my dentine increment starts. Mm -hmm. Like it's a very clear line. Now, renamel via Cosmodent, via Enlighten, make a flowable opaque. Vita shade, so A1, B1, whatever it is. Um, and you can just feather it slightly over this. Oh, there you go. Zoom. That's oh, good. Hey. You can feather it slightly <laughs> over this margin. Um, keep it wafer wafer thin and it just camouflages that that border so if mm -hmm. i can you see the the difference there and it's not you know i've not had to smear loads of comps it's a tiny tiny bit of flowable but we've gone mm -hmm. from a very visible join yeah. to you you know knowing where it is you, you know where it is but to look at that initially there's not a sudden step from tooth to composite if that makes sense it all kind of and that's just a very thin layer sort of what paint almost sort of paint over sort of just oh. <clears throat> little bit on the back of my glove pick it up with a williams probe dab it on and just kind of manipulate it over the junction almost zigzagging kind of up it's and down, disrupting and down. That line. exactly that exactly that um and then tints again a great way so this is why we talk about so it's i'll always take a pre-op photo so you can see on the pre-op there are some white effects in the kind of incisal third but they're not overpowering they're quite subtle um but often by the time you've kind of kept everything dry for 20 minutes, half an hour, wherever you've got to this point, everything dries out a little bit more. And all of a sudden, these white marks are quite mm -hmm. marked. So if you kind of look at it at this stage, you can get a bit carried away with the white. Whereas if you've got your pre-op photo as a reference on your camera next to you, yeah. resort back to that, <clears throat> have a little look, and it's actually a bit more subtle. You know, you, you can see how much they're there when they weren't there in the pre-op um because of dehydration so try and again be random so we've got some little specks up at his eyes ledge some of this horizontal now if you can get little white lines little opacities little this that, and the other crossing your kind of composite and tooth border <coughs> it's another great way of breaking up the light um and tricking your eye so even though there's a border that runs diagonally through here because there's something running across that, we don't see the border, mm -hmm. um, which is good. Um, yeah, and then enamel. And is that something that pre you sort of beveled deliberately at a different angle to where you're going to place, or is that just how it how it's just happened to have gone in that case? Um, it's more how it's happened. It's rare that it kind of the two go hand in hand, but you just try and be a bit random. So, like for example, we've got this here is a bit of a a splodge. This here we've got some. A little bit of horizontal texture um up here we've got a little bit vertical i suppose smeared about and just as long as you keep it random you're gonna you're gonna break across the lines and stuff like that mm -hmm. um, i'm also doing the three at this point at like a completely out of sync so i'll try and take photos and stuff so it's all got mixed <laughs> just look at the two <coughs> we'll just ignore sorry. the canine guys yeah sorry got a bit of covid here um so can give for BACD on the weekend. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'll do some tests. Don't worry. Um, then enamel. So roll into a little pea. A little bit of fluff there. Nice natural nice. effect. Um, <laughs> smear that across. And you're, aim um, you're aiming for a single piece, right? Single piece of fluff. Yeah, you don't want more than one piece, piece of fluff. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's crazy. Yeah. Um, so smear it across. Shape it with your brushes. Um at this point there's probably even though i'm I'm doing edge bonding you know i want my final margin to be up there something like that there's composite down here at this point that's fine we're going to polish that back and back to enamel but if, if you try and end comp if you try and decide where to end your composite then you never in my hands get that invisible margin it's more a let's leave it to the gods let's cover a decent chunk of the tooth let's take it back and it will end where it wants to end and hopefully no one will ever know where it is um just had a, a question there on composite stuff just asking if you do heated or non-heated um non-heated mm -hmm. um i bought a composite heater from brian it is brilliant and i've used it once and it sits gathering dust i thought i'd yeah so no i, I, I just don't i prefer the the stiffness i think going freehand and um 
not having a, a stent or a matrix or anything to push up against that kind of that stiffness of a cool composite works for me yeah fair um, and yeah. anything like um you know sort of modeling resin or anything like that yes brush and sculpt so a few common ones um brush and sculpt again by renamel i'm not sponsored by them i promise um gc do one um, it's a shame it's a shame payman's not here to uh see your chat and all of uh about all their stuff I know. Well, I'll send him a link. He can write me a check at the BACV. <laughs> um, we should plug Payments Party, by the way. Payments Party, no is nine, nine o'clock, be there. <laughs> yeah, be there or be square. Um, be yeah, GC make one. Um, modeling resin. Uh, is it Culver make one? Is it Signum? Is that the Culver one? I can't remember. But anyway, they're all different textures. Play with them all. Um, I like the brush and sculpt probably because it's what i learned with so it, it feels quite natural to me but it's slightly thicker than the others which i like it doesn't create this like really slimy pool of of re resin on the surface it kind of it it's it's a, maybe a little bit more similar to a, f a flowable consistency mm -hmm. not quite that stiff but <coughs> a little bit stiffer um, uh, Dr. Omo just asked, have you used any interproximal matrix here? So have you got your mylar strip in there? Uh, okay, good question. So mylar pulled through, so I didn't have enough hands to take a photo of that. So I'll kind of, at this point, I'll because I, I've only built palatally at this point. Mm -hmm. So I'll get to here, I'll run through with a seri saw to make sure that I've not stuck the teeth together. Nine times out of ten, I have stuck the teeth together. Um, so I'll break that contact with the seri saw. Um, I'll spread the composite over the surface. I'll wet a mylar strip with a little bit of brush and sculpt, slither it into the contact, drag from labial to palatal to pull the composite into the contact and cure it straight from there. Um, if people are interested, there's loads on YouTube. So YouTube, the mylar pull technique, um, and you can see it being done. Yeah, we've got a few more of your lovely patients turning up uh, saying how much they love their teeth. Uh, and Rick reckons oh. that it is Signum, but uh, it's being discontinued. So stock up now. Panic buy, guys. <laughs> oh, where are my patients? Like, oh, there's Chloe. Hi, Chloe. <laughs> Aisha. Hi, Aisha. <laughs> oh, this is nice. Um, cool. Okay. So... Yeah, my patients aren't on Instagram. It's not. <laughs> No, no, they're all. Oh no, they're on Facebook. I, I was, I was, I was going to make an obituaries joke, but I'll not do that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so sorry, we can edit that out. Um, so the yeah, enamels on. It's live. It's happened. Fine. Um, <laughs> enamels on, and then secondary anatomy. We said before. So mm -hmm. um, I actually learned this from one of your videos from Richard Field oh. about using a rose head. So I used to just use blue flexi points again renamel mm -hmm. big up the renamel yeah. um but i've fairly recently started using rose heads to create and i it's very easy to overdo it, you've got to be careful um but to create that kind of almost like a framework of your secondary anatomy which i then soften with blue points and it it's way quicker and looks way better so that's kind of with my secondary anatomy in so mm -hmm. groove there groove there um nice and random and rough you know you don't want this to look too polished if you're trying to blend in with a tooth that's a little bit all over the show you want this to be all over the show um and then polish it to a nice shine and you can see all those effects that you can just about make out before you polish it and you're thinking oh i haven't used enough i can't really see them as soon as you polish it they just fire through at you um nice. and they can look really good so that's the tooth and the canine mm -hmm. just happened like magic as well. Yeah, amazing. <laughs> That's just th thumb on a bit of GIC on the canine. <laughs> so, so in terms of something like that, are you doing them individually or are you going to do like a bunch of shells? How um, do sort of... I'll do it in... Right, how do I do this? Rick Rick says, don't tell everyone about the rose heads. So um, I was going to say, guys, go and check out Richard Lee's episode because he's done more anterior stuff and it was so good even even matt learned something um but uh yeah maybe we shouldn't do it because then everyone will start doing these great ones but yeah richard lee's one on anterior composite is great as well did um I say, did i say richard field 
I meant I Richard, Richard Field. I have no I was Richard talking Field to Richard Field the other day, and I feel like I might have said Richard Field, but Richard Lee, I meant. But it's like Richard, Richard, Richard Lee's in like I'll seventeen time zones over that way now, so he's going to be fast asleep. So don't worry, he won't. Uh, he won't. Be. Go and check out Richard's episode. It's great. Um, White Chapel Dentist is asking about polishing kits, so that's come at quite a good time there. You've got to, you've done your your top secret rose head for your anatomy. What kind of polishing stuff are you going? Is it renamel? Um, <laughs> do you know what? No. <gasps> Really sorry. Payment. I used to. <laughs> I used to use the enamel discs and points, but um, I now use ASAP spirals. It's a two stage. Well, I love the blue points by um, Renamel, by Cosmodent, sorry, first of all. Um, but then for the kind of the luster, I'll use ASAP polishing spirals. So two stage. The nice thing about that is that there's only two steps and you get a really, really good finish on it. Where with the Cosmet one, I just found it a bit too time consuming. And for a single tooth, fine, but like five to five, it, it was taking me forever to get to all the discs and stuff like that. So I've gone for a slightly simplified system um, that works really, really well. Um, really well. Yeah. So that, I know uh, with the, the ASAPs that uh, Stuart's quite keen on. Uh, and if you like this episode, check out Stuart Centre. But uh, I know Stuart's quite key on this. Whilst we're talking about um, about polishing, important obviously for longevity and stains. Uh, so we have a patient-based question there from Pamela saying, does composite bonding stain? So whilst you've got a bunch of your patients on, maybe we could talk a little bit about sort of upkeep there. So longevity, polishing, yeah. upkeep. Um, composite does stain. Uh, the cleaner as a patient you keep it, the less it'll stain. So the mistake that I think some patients make is that they go home and they've got these lovely new composites and they think, right, I'm going to be really careful with these now and really make sure I don't damage them. So they maybe brush a bit too gently around them. Um, whereas the opposite is true. You've got to get in there, you know, give them a good old scrub. You're not going to do any harm with a toothbrush on your composites. <coughs> You're going to keep that stain, prevent it from building up. Um, I will then say that if you notice a little bit of staining, so, or, well, composite bonding, I'll normally provide an Essex retainer to wear afterwards as a kind of a dual function, you know, retention. So we don't get any kind of, you know, movement of teeth over time. And um, if you've been through all the effort of having all this done, you don't want them to move. Um, and also it just helps, you know, if you're a bit of a grinder of a night time or whatever, it, it's not exactly you know jazz gulati level b splint <laughs> right again but just at least having a bit of plastic in there that's comfortable enough to wear just takes the wear and tear off the composites um but also third function is that it can act as a whitening tray so i'll say if you do feel like they've discolored a bit stained a bit whatever it might be don't be scared to pop a little bit of whitening gel in for a couple of nights and if it's on the surface of the composite it will often lift it um, if at that point you think they could still do with a little bit of love, then come in and see me. We'll go and see your dentist, um, and they can give them a bit of a polish for you. And I think the whitening one's a really good, a good thing that maybe we or a lot of dentists don't think about because the way we're always programmed with whitening is like do it before, get the colour right. We never think that oh, actually it could obviously bleach before probably for a lot of these things. But you know, you're just going to top it up. It's going to remove those stains, and, and that can be really, really handy. Yeah. Um, Going back on to your, I think this is the ASAPs that uh, Rick's talking about, is that do you ever find the purple one blitzes the lovely top secret rosehead secondary details? Uh, he's dabbling with using the pink number two on the final polish. Yes, so the purple one... If... I'm just gonna, I'll just get Rick on the live. Uh, he can just, <laughs> you, yeah. you guys can chat. I'll sit in the corner and just like... Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll text him after. Um, <laughs> with the purple one, yeah, it, it can be a little bit of a blunt instrument if you're not careful. So... With the purple one, I'll be really gentle with it. So I won't apply much pressure. Um, and then often I will actually go over my secondary anatomy with a blue point before I then go over with the pink, so the stage two ASAP polisher. So yes, it can be really gentle with it. And if you feel like it has happened, the I find that if I use a blue point and then the pink ASAP polisher, I get just as good a shine by... The blue grit must polish to a similar level as the purple ASAP is what I'm trying to say. Almost mm -hmm. like a polisher. This is maybe a little bit, a little bit gentler. Yeah. Um, oh, we're rattling through the uh, the preloaded questions. Um, avoiding air blows. Any top tips on avoiding some air blows there? Yeah, avoiding. So I 
for my is that a composite but, thing there's one that Stuart always feels like there's loads of blows in like the Venus yeah the, my top thing for this is don't use a compule for your final layer so most composites will come in a compule and a syringe use a syringe um, uh, Richard Lee has just logged on so don't call him something I've done so. <laughs> no pressure, just the best in the biz um, yeah for the final lamel layer I'll always use um, a, a syringe of composite rather than a compule I find that when I squirt out of a compule I get a lot more kind of air bubbles within it I don't know if it's almost like the folding of the composite or the fact that it's coming through a smaller opening or whatever it might be with a syringe I'll kind of chop a bit off the end roll it with a clean glove into a, a pea and pop it on and spread it from there um, and normally we get away okay but you still get them when you get them just sandblast it and pop a little bit more in you know the, mm -hmm. the temptation is to polish them out and s very very occasionally you can get away with it you know and it isn't it funny how they always happen exactly where you were obviously going to put your kind of developmental groove anyway but um <laughs> what i've learned the hard way is the two minutes it takes to pick up the sandblaster, blast it, <clears throat> add a little bit more composite in there and polish it back again is is far better. So, mm -hmm. yeah, use a syringe rather than a compule and you'll get a lot less. And when you do get them, don't try and polish them out. Just sandblast it, open it up, sandblast it and add a bit more. I think the thing with, even, say, even if you're using a syringe, is that, you know, a lot of the time they'll, they'll syringe it and smush it onto the... Onto yeah. the pad, right? You said that slice it. Yeah, take it, it very, straight. Yeah, yeah. Smush it onto a pad, and then it's got already built in loads of air blows. Yeah. Um, there was another question coming up. Um, oh, Rick said, "Don't use Empress to avoid air blows." So there we go. Uh, Richard Lee's just laughing. He doesn't know that you got his name wrong. Uh, how you doing, down under, Richard? Um, Vibu said, "Hey, Matt, what was the name of the opaque you used to camouflage the the margin?" Um, I use the flowable one by Cosmodent, so you can get it from Enlighten. Um, they group it's it's beta shaded, but they group the shades together, so you can get a A one B one that's all one shade. You can get an A two to A two point five, I think, and an A three to A three point five, something like that. And they also do a white opaque, like a like a tip X white that I use for effects and stuff like that. And uh, then I was wondering, you can swipe up for a link to the Enlighten store. <laughs> <laughs> you owed Matt 10 at checkout. Well, 10% off your first order. Um, we, I mean, we sort of covered it a little bit there when you said you're going maybe a bit further down and then polishing back. Uh, one of the other questions that we had was about if you are doing maybe a bit further coverage, sort of placing and finishing closer to the ginger, is that maybe a situation when you might be popping a dam on or retraction or you know how how do you go around sort of when you're starting to get down towards that gingival margin um no i will sandblast it mm -hmm. um and i'll be a little bit ruthless with the sandblaster i'll have my loops on i'll be really making sure that all the biofilm is cleared away because that's where it is biofilm and calc that's where it lurks so get in there don't be shy with the sandblaster you might make it bleed a little bit that's okay. That's what a stringent paste is for. But, you know, get back to enamel. Um, <coughs> etch, obviously. And then after I've etched, I will keep an eye on it for maybe 30 seconds. And if the etch, if it, if it holds that frosted appearance, then it's fine to bond. And once the bond's on, I'm, I'm quite happy then. If we've got one of those horrible leaky gums, um where after 10 seconds after etching you almost see it loses that frostiness at the gingival margin then um a bit of dry retraction cord um if i can be nice and gentle without local if the patient's brave great um if i've got a numb slightly i can normally do it by giving a little kind of a little tiny drop into the attached ginger v um mm -hmm. and it's not enough to affect their smile line but it's enough to give anesthesia for a bit of cord if, if I need it um, but the vast majority of the time a, a retraction paste so 3M retraction paste um, is brilliant and my top tip for that is leave it five minutes so whenever I put retraction paste on I leave the room because the temptation is after 10 seconds to wash it off and it hasn't done its job leave it for five minutes go out have a cup of tea go the loo 
check your WhatsApps, whatever you wanted to do. Um, come back again, wash it off, and you'll almost see like the ginger ale will have blanched. You know, it 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 really works chemically. Um, so for those who maybe haven't used it, is it you know it's, you're putting it in? Is it expanding? Yeah, it, it's, way? It, it's more. I think it's more the chemical side than the physical side of it. So. I kind of, it comes in a, almost like a composite compule, but with a very fine tip. Um, I'll angle that down into the sulcus. I'll squirt whilst holding it there. So I don't want to backfill and it push my compule out. I'll hold it into the sulcus there. Um, once it's in, I'll then with my finger kind of smush it in to make sure that there's not little air blows or voids or whatever. Um, and then I leave and I'll come back five minutes later, wash it out really thoroughly. So I'll literally blast it in three one for like, two minutes um and it, it seems to work perfect i mean yeah so you can pop up for five minutes not check your dms because you're, you're too busy to do that i'm amazed i ever got you on because I, I saw that i was like oh, i'll never i'll never get him on i'll never see my dm um, I'm really i am je- i'm sorry <laughs> watch this i know you'll have dm i'm so sorry i am a, a nine-month-old baby and i do not get anywhere near as much time as i need to go on my instagram but I've got a weekend at the conference. I've got a long train journey tomorrow and I will have a go we'll through them. Yeah. Uh, Rich, oh, Rich, there you go. Richard's uh, is Wednesday morning, so he's going to catch up later, but he's enjoying hearing normal accents. So you were worried about the Liverpool accent, but Richard's absolutely loving it. So there we go. You understand. Uh, <laughs> that too, right? <laughs> uh, Onks here, cheers to his favourites. Uh, question from, well, rewinding a little bit, I guess, but uh, XG Singer's probably just chipped in. Um, Bond, preferring any system in particular um i use the viva pen by ivaclaw yeah um, a little clicker yeah i li- it was in rue when i started working at rue and it's fine there's no evidence base <laughs> it's what i got what i was given and it, i i quite like it um yeah. the, the what i what i got told was that the fact that you never take the lid off as such means that you don't have that sludge when you're getting towards the end of the the bottle um where kind of you've you've lost a decent percentage of your solvent um through evaporation um i don't know if that's true or not but it works fine for me i think the thing with these cases you've got to remember is that you're bonding completely to enamel like the 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 fine details of which etch which bond all that kind of stuff any etch that you can buy from a decent brand and any bond that you can buy from a decent brand is going to stick well to pure, freshly air abraded enamel. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, not for this kind of stuff, not too far. So, well, yeah. Bolton Smile 123, he wants to get back onto the gingerbread margin. So, well, they do. Um, so, how are you shaping the composite along the gingerbread margin? You've only got three instruments, so you're not using the mirror. So. <laughs> <laughs> I've sh- I've sharpened the other end of the handle of the mirror. Yeah, uh, <laughs> great. You unscrewed it, and you got it. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I used uh, fine diamonds, um, red grit, yellow grit, white grit, um, and don't be. And I'll get my disc down there and my my spirals and my blue points as well. Um, the gums, by the time I'm finished, normally are a little bit inflamed and a bit sore looking. But I feel like that's a sign of a job well done. You know, I'd, I'd rather that because I know that within two days that'll look perfect and I've got a decent margin. Um, I don't want to be pussyfooting around the gums to try and prevent that from happening and end up with a lip or a ledge or whatever it might be, which is yeah. going to cause a heck of a lot more inflammation in the long Make run. Make the gums look a lot worse. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the other, another question almost related to this and you sort of briefly touched on it was like sulcus flash and dealing with that. Um, so... <laughs> If you're getting right down there and you've got a bit of, you know, your whatever bond it is, because, you know, it's fine, it's enamel. But, yeah, for whatever, you've got a bit of flesh on there. How are you dealing with that? And as you say, is that just probably coming away with part of your fine diamonds or anything else in particular? Yeah. I'll, I've got a theory. I don't know. People who know more about this will tell me that this is a load of rubbish. But I think that bond flash is great for moisture control because it sits in the sulcus. It stops that gcf it's almost like a little tiny rim of liquid damp it sits there cured stops stuff from coming out i'm not putting composite into the sulcus i'm trying to finish super gingival even that's by a fraction of a millimeter you know 
I, I want a feather margin that's going to end ideally ever so slightly super gingival. Um, and all that flash is going to get blasted away at the end. So having that there acting as a little bit of a, a barrier and it's going to get polished back to enamel afterwards anyway is, I like it. I'm into it. And, and as I say, it's just coming away with your normal sort of polishing, polishing yeah. procedure. Exactly. I think that was all our preloaded questions. So guys, please do keep them coming. Uh, speaking of which, we have one there, which was probably going right back to that first sort of initial case that you showed, which is any recommendations for gum contouring? So is that something you're doing? Have you got Perio in-house that's doing that for you? Yeah, no, um, I do quite a lot of gum contouring. I went on um, Ian Dunn's course. So I don't know if you if you know Ian, but he's a periodontist up in Liverpool. Um, one of the nicest guys you will ever meet. Just some people are very good clinicians and then manage to teach those skills. Ian's a very good clinician, but was born to be a teacher. Like he is just made to teach. Um, and he runs a four day perio masterclass where he goes through perio disease as well as perio surgery and talks about gingivectomy versus um, bone removal and all that kind of stuff. Um, and it was a game changer because all of a sudden, instead of me just leaving the gums where they were and working around them, I was confident enough to pick something up to adjust where the gums were and the results just a, a, a miles miles better and when you can do that comfortably it just you lie the patient back and sometimes you only even plan for it the consultation you lie the patient back you actually do you know what i could do with just just tweaking that zenith or doing that and the laser's there next to you and you little yeah, quick, so laser surgery majority of what you're doing mainly laser um bone sounding first obviously laser if i can um if not raise a flap and get hacking away mm -hmm. not that <laughs> you like get consent for that kind of stuff that's not like yeah and you've, you've put a tiny you just put a tiny bit in the attached ginger of la for that right same as yeah, the yeah. retraction post yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but with this i mean interesting this is what i was i was chatting to someone else um a few days ago about this and sort of they were doing some shadowing with an, um, a periodontist and saying actually like i'm going to go in look at my case on monday and think i need to move this but it's like the final piece of the puzzle right and it's that adage they always say is patients see, you know, white and black and then to see pink and then white. It's such an important part yeah. of the framing that, that we don't you know, maybe appreciate that much. Um, yeah. I mean, I had, if, you, if you're interested in Perio stuff, guys, I've done a live with uh, Rena Wadi and we talked a lot about that as well. Um, or, or check out this course there. Uh, Rick, Rick Brown for the pink estates all day long. He'll book it one day. There we go. Um, we're still waiting for the the pink and white masterclass from uh, from Matt Parsons. That's all we need. Um, loads Bye. of questions. Oh, Richard Fields checked in. There we go. Fantastic. So get, get you in trouble both sides. Um, Bolton Smile really keen on the gingival margin. So you've said about polishing the actual placement there. I know you've only got your three uh, three yeah. uh, things. So you're trying to never place subgingival. Yeah, I wouldn't want composite subgingival. <laughs> Personally, I don't know, you know, some of these superstars can, can get that margin into the sulcus that's 0.5 mil and have it perfectly flush with the tooth. I can't do that. And I also don't really see the advantage in doing that because you, you kind of, you know, these teeth, you, you want that gradient, you want teeth to be yellower at the gum than they are at the tip. That's what teeth look like. Um, mm -hmm. And if you kind of, Bevel, for want of a better term, um, the composite up to the gingival margin. You get that gradient shining through and you can finish half millimetre above the gingival margin and it looks nice. It, it, it looks better that way. Um, if you've got composite right up and into the sulcus, can't be kept clean. You're going to just get inflammation. It doesn't even look nice anyway. Why would you bother? You get a much nicer emergence and a more natural look from finishing it super gingival for me personally and is in there about the sort of cervical third and that's where a lot of people i think prefer this would be you know edge bonding and steer away from the veneers obviously it's horses for courses but you know so that because that gives you that maybe that transition a little bit easier and that more natural business to say rather than a, a block slab sort of look at the shade yeah um what we got there loads of bits um someone asked about air blows earlier on so we did cover that so just catch up the on the on the tv later 
uh, loads of questions. People still signing in. Everyone wants to come and see you, bud. Uh, Matt told me about the Mylar pull a while back has changed the game for me. Maybe let's just go on to that again because that's uh, and again Richard Lee covered that in his uh, in his live as well. I think, but um, just run us run us through that again. You've got your palatal shell, and then how are you sort of causing that? Tad Fizani says Matt the magician. <laughs> but let's uh, yeah, let's just touch on the Mylar pull again because we've had loads of people sign in. You might have missed that bit. Cool. Um, my lot pull. So you want to, so you, you carve your composite into your contact point. You get your shape 99% of the way there. You wet, you cut about maybe two inches of my lot um, and cut it. So don't use the, the serrated edge of the dispenser because um, you get like a little zigzag at the end. Ask your nurse to cut it with scissors. Um, wet the strip. So paintbrush, a little bit of um, a modelling resin, brush and sculpt, wet one side of the strip, shimmy the strip down into the contact point um, and pull it gently from buccal, from labial to palatal. Mm -hmm. As soon as you've done it, cure it. And yeah, it works really nicely. It's a very visual thing, this. It's hard to describe, but like I said before, Go on YouTube, have a little search on YouTube. Um, there's videos of it being done. And as soon as you see it, like when I try and describe it to people, they say, yeah, but but you've got to have something in there when you cure it and you've got to have this and you've got to have that. But when you see it, you go, oh, right, no, I get that. That looks fine. Mm -hmm. I thought you were teeing yourself up then for it. I'm going to take some photos and I'll, we'll do a part two. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect, my man. Um, guys, any other questions, do please uh, keep them coming. Um, we want to try and make sure that Matt doesn't have any time to pack for BACD tomorrow. Um, tab I've just had a WhatsApp you... for me. I'm say, <laughs> do I need a dinner suit? Like, we'll literally get in the train tomorrow, and I don't think he has one. Uh, yeah, we're, I'm, I'm super, super fancy. Um, tab please asked, do you use a wand, and what make is it? So I'm not sure if he's asking... LA wand if he's talking about anything else maybe you can uh, let us know um, I think Ollivanders is the best place I've found for wands so far mm -hmm. um, yeah does the job any Harry Potter fans out there will have got that right <laughs> um, Dr Megan's asked what lab do you use for wax ups for plate to shelf silicons well we said we don't overly use them um, and would you recommend getting wax ups or free hands so yeah, Tadfi's just on the magic one, so does he know that you're a big Harry Potter fan? Um, so yeah, so in terms of you know wax ups and things, it's not something you personally personally using, but um... no, but um, wax ups from a lab from your own lab. But tell them what you use. So don't ask ask for a wax up. You know, please wax up upper three to three. Say tell them what you're doing because if you get back a set of veneer wax ups, then that's not what you want. You want wax up for edge bonding um, because for a veneer wax up, they'll spend all their, their time getting lovely anatomy and detail on the labial and the kind of the join between the palatal aspect of the tooth and the new edge of the, of the wax might not be ideal. So tell them what you're using it for um, make sure they spend the time on that, the, the part that you're going to get from the wax up, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Um, <laughs> loads and loads of questions are flying in uh, Tabby says the magic one because he makes comps that look like ceramic there we go straight in um, mm -mm -mm. so Dental Careers Guides asked is it tricky to retreat a few years down the line so obviously we talked a bit earlier about staining but obviously we've got a lifespan on on this sort of direct work uh, well, and indirect work but you know what's your protocol about redoing bonding that may be something you've done or or someone else but how does that look? Are you stripping everything away? I have done. Um, it's a hell of a lot better than you'd expect as long as you've got the time in your diary to do it, is what I'd say. It's, you know, we've got burrs, we've got tungsten carbide, tungsten carbide burrs that don't, that are enamel safe in inverted commas. Um, dense ply make enhanced discs, enhanced burrs, which are lovely for adding secondary anatomy. Um, but I, well, kind of initial shaping and a little bit of secondary anatomy. But I also find that they're really gentle on enamel. So when the composite's really thin, I'll use my enhanced burr. And because it's dry, you can see exactly where the composite's left and you take it off and, and stuff like that. Um, 
So in terms of retreating, just book a lovely long appointment, get your loops on, get your light on, get a nice Fleetwood Mac album on and just do it. <laughs> and it's not as bad as you'd think. You know, if you've got 20 minutes to take off 10 comps of veneers, it's going to be pretty crap. But if you've got two hours to do it, it's really not as unpleasant as people think it will be. Perfect. Um, do, do, do. Loads of questions. Tom Gall, I think, is going to be one of the people you're going to be replying to in the DMs. He's looking for an idea about costs of treatment. Um, and if you can see him soon, how long is that waiting list? Um, Bolton smiles on it again. They're loving, loving it tonight. Um, in well-positioned teeth, do you remove any tooth enamel? Uh, and how thick are, on average is the composite bonding that you're doing? So obviously you touched on that with that demo earlier on where you're saying about sort of ameloblasty on the distal or whatever. So how often are you looking at that? And, you know, are you, are you, well, you're doing, you're doing a lot of Invisalign as well in some, a lot of these cases and sort of yeah. maybe lopping off corners and things like that too much. Yeah. I think if, if we're, in, in my opinion, you know, respect everyone's opinion. In my opinion, if you're having to prep for composites, then really that patient's probably going to, you're going to do the more of a service with either ortho or porcelain. You know, the advantage of composite is that you you don't have to prep the teeth. If you're having to prep the teeth, then you kind of lose that advantage and it, it take cost out of it. You've then just got two treatments, one whereby you're prepping and it'll last for five years and another where you're prepping and it'll last for maybe 15 years or whatever. So, as soon as you have to prep, I will try and stick with try and either persuade an ortho or maybe say pause. That might be the way to go and get if we're if we're going to remove a bit of enamel, let's at least get the longevity out of it. Yeah. Um, but um, beveling, so I will sometimes add a little bit of a be bevel to a big old class four. Um, I find that if there's a very kind of jagged or sudden but joint from where the old fracture was or whatever it might be um, without over bulking that area of the final restoration and covering a heck of a lot more tooth it's difficult to hide that margin um, and that's where a bevel will come in handy just you know just a short bevel across the margin there in terms of edge bonding I don't really bevel I'd rather mm -hmm. you know when a tooth's already lost 40% of it adding a little bit of a bevel is almost not a terrible thing whereas if you're taking virgin teeth and add in bevel just to make your composites look a little bit nicer you can make them look nice enough without having to do that so you know it's better in my opinion to go without perfect and uh, do, do, do with the opaca do you always use that opaca to mask the margins yes i can't remember edge bonding i can't remember the last time i didn't use it that's why he's sponsored uh, <laughs> uh what else have we got um, ah, mylar pull technique. Have you ever used it on posterior composite points? Would that ever work? Um, I haven't. I don't think it would. The reason it works on anteriors is because the contact point is almost two dimensional. You know, it's a it's a flat surface, and it's maybe what a millimetre thick or whatever it might be. Posterior, you've got about six different curves to look at and think about. So, you, with the mylar pull, you get a very straight contact so uniform. Point. Yeah, posterior, posterior, I don't think it'd work. I think it'd be very fiddly and I don't think it would work either. Uh, 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 Tom Gall is really, really keen to find out your price range for full full mouth bonding, I think. Um, full mouth bonding. So composites, um, edge bonding, we charge £300 a tooth. Um, composite veneers, we charge £400 a tooth. Um it's very rare that we do a full mouth. It's more, let's try and do as little as we possibly can. You know, let's look at whitening. Let's look at maybe a bit of ortho, this, that, and the other. And let's, if 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 there's a certain look that you want, a very very white look or very done or whatever it might be, fine. But let's maybe look at whitening the lows as much as we can, and maybe see if that gives you a result that you're happy with and stuff like that. Because the less we do, the less there is to maintain, the less there is to pay for, the less there is to pay for again when it comes to replacing them. So, yeah. You know, yeah. less is more. Always sounds good to me. And there's another one there. I've missed it. I've lost it. There's too many. They're flying in. Uh, Tom Gal, can he get in touch? Get into those DMs. He's uh, sorting them out tomorrow, right? On that long train. Not all uh, of them. <laughs> uh, there's a web. If you consultations, if you go to drmatparsons.com, pop your details in, and 
you'll be on my list. Perfect. There we go. Bolton Smile One Two Three is absolutely carrying us through this live. Um, how do you reduce the incidence of incisal chipping? There we go. Uh, That's the big one. That is the big one. So make sure you're using a strong composite. So microfill from enamel, amazing composite, but not particularly strong. So you need a hybrid composite at the incisal edge. Um, Nanofill composites, for example, Filtech Supreme, I think, Tokoyama, Estelite. Um, again, lovely poshability, lovely aesthetics, but at an incisal edge, not as strong as a hybrid. Um, so try and make sure that at your incisal edge, you've got micro or nano hybrid composite which is most of the composites on the market but always double check um make sure it's thick enough so to get these kind of beautiful aesthetics the temptation can sometimes be to get that incisal edge wafer thin in composite you can't really get away with it you know you need at least a millimeter of thickness there minimum ideally a, a bit thicker if you can and maybe taper it up towards the palatal um to make sure it doesn't look too chunky um and always be wary of patients who have lost their canine guidance don't be scared to stick a little tip on a lower canine sometimes sometimes to get a patient back into canine guidance you almost end up with them looking like dracula whereas if you if you're willing to pop a little canine tip on the lowers that have worn as well that can look better and give you that disclusion when they go side to side um and also be wary of the deep bite case as well because they've got a lovely habit of smashing things to bits and uh, bring it and bring it in the sort of that's where the author's coming into it as well. Check out Tiff Koresh's episode on that. Uh, <laughs> it's all coming together quite nice, isn't it? Um, Dr. MB Aesthetics is saying hi. She's also asking uh, about um, my last PTFE. She's guessed it. We've already covered that. Get it on the catch up. Um, prepping enamel, sandblasting. Yep, yeah, get it on the catch up. Um, we've been very efficient tonight, haven't we? Uh, Phoebe's asking on a, on average how often do composite bonding need to be redoing give or take um let's say five years on average if it's sooner than that then you've either sorry I know it sounds a bit blunt you've either not looked after them as well as you could have done or you've been really unlucky um if you look after it really well and do everything that we ask you to do and come for maintenance it's not surprising to see it lasting longer than that. But if you have five years in your head, then you're probably not going to be a million miles off and you're probably not going to be overly disappointed if it is at the shorter end of the spectrum. Perfect. And Protrusive Dentals just popped on, so this can be like your audition for an episode. Here he is. Yes, boys. Hi, Jazz. Um, do, do, do. Let's keep scrolling back. Um, okay. I did a group focus with Jazz. Oh, nice. Line angles. I'm, I've probably listened to that. <laughs> I'm just like a bit sure just listening to it. Uh, oh, Tom Gal said, come see you or Sutton. Oh, maybe that was for me. It might be a dentist. Sorry, Tom. I thought it, if it's for me, I thought it was for, I thought it was for Matt. So just, just uh, message me if that's, if you're asking for me and I'll get back to you after this. Um, do, do, do. Unless you know, uh, there's another composite guy called Sutton up in the, up in the Northwest there. Um, MU Dr. Sock, how do we get in touch regarding undergrad teaching opportunities? Get in the DMs and get in the queue for Matt, by the sounds of it. Um, have you ever bonded over porcelain crowns? I guess as a temporary measure. I no, I did it. I I've done it I've done it once or twice. Um patient adamant what a concept been is, but currently had crowns on her two centrals. <laughs> what we asked back for the lab, we took the old central crowns off. We asked for a almost basically a veneer prepped crown to come back. So it, it glazed and everything and perfect full anatomy kind of three quarters of the way. The labial aspect looked like it had been veneer prepped. It had also mm -hmm. been etched and silenated as if it were a bonding surface of a veneer. Um, cement the crown and then bond comes it to the front. And crazy yeah couple of, couple of years later they're still there still looking good um she got married recently if she ends up watching this congratulations um <laughs> the work first came back with just a completely cut out labial aspect so when you ask for these weird things from labs pick up the phone and ask them and explain exactly what you want because that was a bit of a nightmare on the day i can remember so, yeah a few years ago now but um but yeah so you, you can do it you know not 
it works fine. There's no reason it wouldn't. You know, bond strength's there. It's it's the same bonds. It's, it's resin to properly treated porcelain. It's exactly how we cement our veneers. And yeah, yeah. Work okay. yeah. That's fair enough. Um, Dr. MB, who I'm assuming is Maria, based on uh, Rick's later comment, has said, uh, what's the one instrument you couldn't do without your, what's your desert island instrument? Rick reckons the LM Applica or another skinny flat plastic. Other brands are available. Very good, Rick. Very uh, democratic there. Yeah, IPCL. IPCL or Optrasculpt. Optrasculpt are cool as well. Um, Dr. MB is Marion, by the way. I went to uni with Marion. She's cool. There you go. Um, Bal, Matt Rupert, top episode. Cheers, buddy. Um, Mido1985 said, what restorative courses would Matt recommend? I assume that's not the former Tottenham and Egypt striker Mido. <laughs> <laughs> Composite courses. I've done two. I did Depeche's course, um, Mini Star Makeover, and I did... Andy McLean's course, uh, Simplifying Composite Veneers. Um, both totally different, both absolutely brilliant. Um, they both work in completely different ways. Depeche is a build it meticulously layer by layer, and by the time you've cured it, it's pretty much perfect. Andy is get it on and cut it back, and by the time you finish cutting it back, it's absolutely perfect. So it was nice to get two perspectives on it, because I think all of our brains work differently. Some of us are painters some of us are sculptors some of us like to build some of us like to chisel away so that was nice variation for me um, but they're the two that i've done and would recommend both well after uh, after bacd this weekend when i've done the taste of the stuart beggs anterior composite course i'll let you guys all know uh yeah. rick, rick it, the, the ultra sculpt is the thumb i, th I thought he was going to go with the the left index finger for the platal shell but but there we go um i had a question actually about the BACD conference just flows really nicely, this doesn't it? What a time to be alive. Um, do we think it's worth there? We go, there it is. Do you reckon there's loads of questions? Do you recommend going to BACD conference? Is it really beneficial educationally or is it more social networking, social slash networking? Um, you know, look, look forward to seeing. Oh, I'd really nice to meet you in person like a million times. Um, torn about going for the weekend. Well, I mean, Pascal Manier is going to be there, so that's going to be epic. Uh, and then, yeah, there's loads of cool hands-on stuff, um, which should be good. I've, so, been, yeah. and, uh, I've well, never been either, well, so we'll do another episode reviewing it. There we go. We'll do our honest uh, honest review. Grey and dishevelled <laughs> and broken. And that was just the weather in there. If anyone is going, don't forget, yeah, was, um, don't forget, Enlightened Party, Thursday night, um, check out Payman Langrudy's Instagram. We put something on the other day. Um, that is a night not to miss. I reckon you're going to be on the door with a clipboard. I can see this. <laughs> Selling Renamolo Pika. Yeah. <laughs> um, Jazz has asked, hopefully he's still on, 27 micron or 50 micron air abrasion. He's getting to the, literally the nitty gritty of it there. Nice. He loves it. Well, while I'm chopping my onions, I'll normally pick up the 27 <laughs> micron um, aluminium oxide. Um, Classic Patrice. Yeah, 27. I think I got told, I don't know if it's true or not, but... 27 is good for everything. 50 actually decreases bond strength to dentine, even though it's fine for enamel. I don't know if that's right or not. It might not be, but I use 27 because I've got, I'm low key and I've got one sandblaster and I do not switch between two sandblasters. So I stick with 27. That sounds like a, that sounds like a biomimetic guys question, isn't it? That's, uh, that's what we need to ask. Who, I mean, just Alan, Alan, Alan's on the Cornish dentist. Fantastic. Guys, oh, yeah. any last questions or are we going to let Matt go and, and pack his bags? Um, whilst anyone's thinking of final questions, I like to finish it. We've already, we've got the new one, Desert Island Instrument, what, the one you can keep with you for the rest Desert of your life. Island, but complex disc. <laughs> but um, I like to sort of close it out with the sort of one for everyone, which is, you know, is there one thing that you do now or wish you did earlier that, you know, top tip, what would you want to have done earlier, whether it's a, assessment thing whether it's the mylar pull technique but we've talked enough about that so you can't use that one one thing can i give one thing that i'm glad that i did go for it i'm if you if you say <laughs> read that whole course <laughs> the <laughs> word enlightened comes up in the next minute and a half i swear <laughs> well i am very glad that i did that but um one thing that i'm glad that i did was that i worked in busy mixed predominantly nhs practice until i figured out 
what I was good at and what I liked. You know, I think a lot of people come out of uni deciding that they want to be an oral surgeon because they've taken out three teeth and they liked it or an endodontist because they found an MB2 once or whatever it or a cosmetic dentist that's a really common one um but Especially actually now, no, right? Instagram yeah. dentist um yeah insta insta dentist but you know I don't think maybe it's a little bit harsh but um not everyone's good at cosmetic dentistry you know some people just aren't that's not the way their mind works I'm there you go. I'm absolutely rubbish at dentures. Cannot make them to save my life. Um, some people struggle to take teeth out, but are brilliant at doing root canal and stuff like that. So don't be scared to actually just go and live in the real world and treat thousands of patients and see what you like and see what you're good at before you decide which way to go, mm -hmm. rather than deciding really early what you want to do. Just get stuck in, right? Yeah, get stuck in. Make some dentures, do some endo, and then buy a shed load of composite. Go on the mini swipe makeover course and become an Instagram. <laughs> Use loads of whitening. Enlighten's a great brand. Uh, yeah, you won't go to the Enlighten party. Yeah. Um, I think yeah, I think everyone's happy with. Oh, we got one more question. Bolton smile. Yes, I'm, they need to come on all the time. This is great. Um, I want to pop well, a seat in this place. This is an absolute super fan. Um, also, Tanfi just saying you're such a humble and super talented guy and you're very refreshing and your work is super inspiring. I, yeah. I agree. Um, Thank even you very much. Reply to his DMs. Nightmare. Um, yeah. So last, let's do the last question then from Bolton Smell123. Um, Well-defined line angles. Discs, how do you go about line angles? Um, oh, Christ. Who answered the... Who asked the bloody 10-minute answer right at the end? Wait. <laughs> In fact, do you know what? Right, let's do a shameless plug. Let's do a shameless plug. Um, if you check out the Protrusive Dental podcast by Jazz, yes, um, like it, did a an episode a little while ago about line angles, and it was like twenty minutes, maybe something like that, thirty minutes, all about that. So if you can find it, it was called. He does these mini ones that he calls group function. Um, if you can track it down, it was a few months ago now. Um, we literally spoke about it for like half an hour about how to get to find line angles. So. Yeah, that's that's my answer. There we go. And if you want to learn about lower suction dentures, check my episode out with Jazz, <laughs> where we did that. My man, that was absolutely fantastic. I will see you tomorrow night. See you tomorrow night. Sounds great. Excellent. Cheers, guys. And um, we'll let you know about BACD next week. We're keeping on with this sort of anterior aesthetic stuff. We're doing veneers, porcelain veneer stuff. We'll stick to with Sam Jetworth. I'll see you there. Cheers, I guys. I did Sam's course and he really knows his shit. He's awesome. So that'll yeah. be a good one. There we go. It'll be a good one. We'll see you there, right? See you later. See you, buddy. Cheers. Bye.